Nephi murdered Laban. This is the accusation that I have heard some people declare who think they know the scriptures or know better than God does. God made us in his image and expressly forbids us to murder one another, which means the unlawful taking of a human life. Now Laban was not persuaded by Nephi's oldest brother to hand over the brass plates, but instead Laban falsely accused Laman of being a robber and desired to murder him under this pretext. Later, Nephi and his brothers gathered all their riches and offered to trade all their wealth with Laban for the brass plates. This would have been a huge bargain for Laban. But Laban lusted after all their property, and coveting it all for himself, he kicked them out, and being a military leader, commanded his servants to go after them and to murder them. So Laban had effectively become a thief and a murderer. Later that night, Nephi found Laban drunk and unconscious. In 1 Nephi chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, we read, And the Spirit said unto me again, Behold, the Lord hath delivered him into thy hands, yea, and I also knew that he had sought to take away mine own life, yea, and he would not hearken unto the commandments of the Lord. And he had taken away our property, and it came to pass, that the Spirit said unto me, Again, slay him, for the Lord hath delivered him into thy hands. Twice Nephi was told that the Lord had delivered Laban into his hands, and this only after Laban had broken the law where Nephi and his brothers were concerned. Is there biblical precedence for this? Yes, there is. One example, and there are more, is in Judges chapter 3. And I'll just read verses 15 through 25. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left-handed, and by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon the king of Moab. But Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had made an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. But he himself turned again from the quarries that were by Gilgal, and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king, who said, Keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting in a summer parlor, which he had for himself alone. And Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat. And Ehud put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. And the haft also went in after the blade, and the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly, and the dirt came out. Then Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. When he was gone out, his servants came, and when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked, they said, Surely he covereth his feet in the summer chamber. And they tarried till they were ashamed, and behold, he opened not the doors of the parlor. Therefore they took a key and opened them, and behold, their Lord was fallen down dead on the earth. The Lord does not lightly deliver up a person or a society of people to be destroyed until they are ripe for destruction. When Jesus Christ came to the fig tree toward the end of his ministry and saw that it bore no fruit, he destroyed it, foreshadowing what would very soon happen to the branch or the tribe of Judah at Jerusalem, or in other words, the Jews who rejected his new covenant. A fruit tree that bears evil fruit or no fruit at all is good for nothing but to be burned as we read about in Jacob chapter 5. And this is what will happen to many fruitless and evil people when Jesus Christ returns in glory.